Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Southmost Texas. Everyone that you saw out there is gathered for a very important reason. The last stand of Montezuma cypress trees in the entire United States is in jeopardy of dying. The Montezuma cypress is a very special tree. It is the same species as the Arbol del Tule in Oaxaca. The city of Brownsville has redirected the water that irrigates into the Resaca elsewhere. Meaning that the water that would have fed these trees is no longer going up to them. So we're all here kind of rallying, trying to show awareness for this. Let's see what happens. I'm here with Eugene Fernandez. He is the man who is leading the fight to protect this very important area here in Southmost Texas. Eugene, why does this place matter? This place is should be uh, on everybody's map. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a grove of 47 Montezuma cypress. Now, mind you, there's a problem with there only being 47. Back several years ago, there were 60 of them. Mm. So that means that that many of them have died. And why did they die? Because of lack of water. If you can look down, you can see we're in the Rosaka bottom and there's no water in this Rosaka. City of Brownsville has a plan in order to refurbish this area. We uh, did the remake on the bridge down there, the old bridge that was part of this uh, Celestine Jaguz plantation. The problem is, is that the water has been left out of this Rosaka for far too long mm -hmm. and that's where we need the civic involvement that's where we need the, the people behind the program here in order to go to the city administrators and say hey this uh, this pristine reserve here matters to us especially to the people southmost and uh, please expedite the project that's what we're trying to do we're trying to expedite the project we're, we don't want to go in there and cause a fight or whatever we want to bring it to the attention of this, the, the citizens of Brownsville all right, and where where can they go to sign the petition? Uh, actually, in my group uh, in particular, uh, we're going to try to get a, another central location, but on my Facebook page, which is an open page, it's Eugene Fernandez with an F, and you can see sign the petition on there. And please make a point, this particular petition has the facility on it to capture the email address, your email address, and that's almighty important mm -hmm. because later on we're going to disseminate information back to the people and tell them uh, what the progress is or what the non-progress non is and, uh, and involve them in maybe some voluntary efforts and also include them in other very, very interesting narratives because there's historical accounts that we want to give back to the people. And uh, so it'll be very interesting to, to be a part of that petition. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, I'll put the link in the description. Very good. All right. Thank you, Gene. Thank you then. All right, let's start with a story. This is gonna be a fireside chat, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> the uh, the story is a beautiful one, and I've got to start back on that when I visited Vitabel Jagu. Now, isn't that a French name? Vitabel Jagu. She was 93 years old, and she lived in a house down at the end down here. Wow. Um, this whole sector uh, is 600 was 640 acres that was uh, Celestine Jagu's plantation. Okay, I was visiting her and getting the interview and all of that, trying to jostle some things in her mind. And uh, one of the questions that I asked her was, is the old plantation house still there? That burnt out shell? I'll get to that in a minute. Mm. At the end of that, she said, better watch out for those people, they'll shoot you. <laughs> hey, shoot, I've been in South America, I've been in eight revolutions and I don't have anything. Well, I got one little scratch here, but nonetheless. And all of this was jungle down in here and everything. So I got to nose in and I followed the, I thought I was back in the Amazon basin, right? And so I went all the way through and I went on over there. I cleared, so classic, it's like a, uh, a Polaroid moment. I cleared a palm leaf away 
And there was the bridge. Now that bridge, I, I uh, recognized immediately because uh, so I was into art brokerage in New Orleans for quite a while and I bought a piece by Norman Rockwell when he was on a sabbatical in Paris back uh, in his uh, mid years. And it was called Le Pont Neuf, right behind Notre Dame Cathedral, right? I looked at that thing, not even knowing all that I know after the 13 years, I said, Le Pont Neuf. Celestine Jagu's house was a showplace in furniture. All the furniture was from Paris, you know, it was all uh, uh, your Victorian period and the whole thing. You know what I was looking for? Mm. I was looking for Celestine Jagu's botanical notes, right? In 1872, he bought this place and he turned it into a test camp for uh, uh, agriculture. And he experimented with all kinds of things, uh, uh, fruits and vegetables, and he made this a Garden of Eden. And I wouldn't you just love to, to just pull out a dusty old manuscript and there are botanical notes that have never surfaced before that showed the processes of how he did it back in 1872, even to the degree of improving the irrigation. So I've been working all of these years afterwards. In 2013, we sent all of these volunteer groups down and hacked away at the jungle that was around that bridge. None of this was even passable. This right here is a national treasure, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Can you think of any place else in, in South Texas that even remotely appears uh, so dramatic as this? I've got the word from the mayor, city manager, that they expedited this. Yay! Yeah! Well, and so uh, we're going to push it as fast as possible uh, to get this uh, manicured and prepped so we can uh, uh, so we introduce uh, water back into it. And then here's the message to you. If you see the story behind this and how a Frenchman came out of the Bas Pyrenees, that's the, the lower slopes of the Pyrenees Mountains between Spain and France, mm. uh, at the time of the Civil War, settled into this part of the country and built this uh, Garden of Eden uh, out from nothing. It was, it was just uh, chaparral and brush. And he put himself into the history books. Uh, and all of the, uh, the contribution that he made for the science of agriculture and all of that. This is a sacred ground right here. Their legacy should live on. And the only way it's going to really live on is by the guarantee of you keeping this in your mind and keeping it actively in front of the, the, the face of, of the administrators that are in charge of it. So we have a deal? Yes. Deal. Yeah. Deal. Yeah. It is so almighty important that we lend an effort in order to stick together to make sure that this project comes uh, to fruition. Uh, it is so great to be back in AC. <laughs> Listen, follow Eugene Fernandez on Facebook. I'll put his link in the description. If you live in the Rio Grande Valley, if you live in Brownsville, if you live in Southmost, and if this really sparked your interest, Come out and help. Come out and help. Eugene will be posting updates as to when the community can come out to volunteer. This is a heavy project, but it can be done. It is perfectly possible to save the last remaining grove of Montezuma Cypress in the United States. Let's do it. Let's have a good one. Take care. Kick ass.